This episode of Local Film Talk was recorded in the Green Room at Natty Green's in downtown Raleigh. Perfect for business meetings or just joining friends to watch the big game, the Green Room is the ideal place to host your next event. To learn more, contact David Crack at 919-232-2477 or email david at nattygreens.com. Hi, welcome to uh, Triangle Life TV. This is Local Film Talk. As you can tell, I am not Bob Walters. My name is Dean Garris. And today we are sitting down with award-winning filmmaker Christopher Moore. Chris, thanks for joining us. I'm glad to be here. We are at Natty Green's in the Green Room. Um, very nice establishment. And we're just going to chat a little bit about uh, film. So sure. everybody in the area kind of knows who you are, Chris. Um, so for the people not in the area, how would you describe like in an elevator pitch? your films, your style, who you are as a filmmaker? Um, I would say that um, hopefully a, a visual filmmaker. Um, I think um, I, I've gotten to the point now where I realize the type of films I want to make are films that I enjoy watching and a lot of that has to do with like horror films. So I am sort of, sort of trying to make that kind of impression when it comes to the films I make. Um, when it comes to the genres that I work in. I mean, at some point I'll probably branch out a little bit more, but for right now I'm really enjoying the doing the types of films that I'm doing right now. Right. What, uh, what first got you into film? Like, what, was there a linchpin moment? Uh, when we were chatting earlier, you mentioned Star Wars. Uh, one, probably one of the earliest influences on me was Star Wars. Um, I've always been a huge fan of movies. And Star Wars was the first film that affected me to the point where, you know, I had the Darth Vader shoes and the Darth Vader toothbrush, and I was always about the bad guys, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kenner um, had those amazing toys. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had everything, you know, and so, and it, and it opened up my eyes to how a film can open up a world to you when you're watching it. Um, and as I got older, I started to appreciate it even more, you know, um, realizing the impact that a film can have on somebody. It can make somebody jump because they're scared, it can make somebody cry, it can make someone laugh, it can make someone think. It's, a, it's amazing that you can make something that has like such a lasting impression on people to where people are quoting it or they're talking about I'm never, I'm never going into the water again because of Jaws or mm -hmm. those type of things. And then I think later on, you know, things like um, I really gotten to the point of where I really love visual directors like Sam Raimi was a huge, is a huge influence on me mm -hmm. even today. Uh, Evil Dead 2 was a huge influence on me when I, when I saw it because they did so many really cool visual things for, for such a, a low, you know, low budget independent film. Right. And it's just really the ingenious ways that they got certain shots and um, that film really sort of made a huge impression on me and, and made me want to make those type of films as I got older. Uh, what, was the, what was the first film or video that you ever made? Um, for me it was... Um I had a camera when I was a kid um, that we had, and me and my sisters would use, use it in film stuff. Mm -hmm. Was did you have any experiences like that, or? Well, you know, the funny thing is, um, it, it, it's not until later that I actually sort of really uh, made a concerted effort to make films. I mean, I'd always made like little films here and there um, when I was younger. I, I, I actually, uh, when I got my first video camera, I was shooting all kinds of different stuff, and then. I went to visit my grandfather who was in the hospital and they stole my video camera. So I didn't have a video camera for the longest time and that was back when I was like in, in high school. And it wasn't until I got older that, you know, I got a camera again and just started filming different stuff. I used to do all kinds of parody stuff with like the church that I used to go to, the, there was an improv group I was affiliated with that I used to do like intro videos for, for some of the shows and then um, I, I've entered in like a couple of the Star Wars fan film contests. I did one called Kill Jabba that was like Kill Bill but with Star Wars, and another one called um, uh, Star Gump, which was Forrest Gump and Star Wars. <laughs> so like and mashups. Kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah, and I, there was, I think a lot of my early stuff, a lot of it was kind of parody stuff, mm -hmm. because I realized as a filmmaker, uh, because I've never went to film school, my film school was watching films. You know, mm -hmm. growing up, I read, uh, you know, other than seeing films, I read every kind of, I, I was big into like Fangoria Magazine and Cinema Fantastique and a lot of these magazines that show you how they did things you know like I had I still have the videotape of how they made Empire Strikes Back and how they they made the, the lasers was somebody hitting like a, a, a wire on a 
a light pole or something and making that sound, like pew, pew, that kind of sound, yeah. or how they did stop motion for certain things or things like that really interest me how they made films and how they could do the special effects right. and how they, and then by watching films and by sort of almost like aping the style and shots, I think I've, that's, ha that's how I've learned as a filmmaker. About every film I've done has had some influence based on some other film, even stuff that I didn't write initially. So you're probably um, like me in that I absolutely love um, director commentaries on DVDs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, in fact, that, that's one of the things that I, that I get irritated. If, if, if they release a Blu-ray and it doesn't have special features, I have no interest in it. Mm -hmm. Because I want to I sort of, I want to be much more integrated into like, okay, this is how they did this, or this is behind the scenes stuff, or, or the commentary where they talk about different things, mm -hmm. um, about how they came up with this shot, or how this happened, or this was an improv moment. So um, I love behind the scenes type stuff. I, you can I, learn so much from those. You do, and I think, like I tell people all the time, it's like, that should be your film school. Go, go see, if, if there's a certain filmmaker that you enjoy watching and those are the type of films you want to make, you know, check out some of the special features on his films. Like David Fincher is really huge into like a lot of the special features with his films and behind mm -hmm. the scenes stuff. If you go like uh, the Seven DVD that has all the interesting things from color correction to, you know, sound design and all these different things, it's just really interesting, you know, to see how these people people made this specific type of film. And that's that's how I've learned as a filmmaker. That's how I consistently learn as a filmmaker. So what was the first film that you made, and like one of your early films, where you thought, you know what, I could do this. I've got something, and this works. Well, um, I mean, I had one earlier experience where I won a contest. Uh, uh, KFC had a popcorn chicken commercial contest, and mm -hmm. it was back in 2003. And I entered it not thinking I would win, and I, I came in third place out of a thousand entries. Um, but later on, the first film that really made me realize, wow, you know, maybe this is the direction I really need to go to, is uh, I had a movie called Hard Staple. That back in back in 2007, I think it was, I made it. It was a John Woo contest where you had to make a film that was like John Woo, and I was, I was a big fan of John Woo because right. visually, you know, he's very balletic and the way he shoots action scenes and stuff. So I wanted to ape some of that and almost do almost like a parody of it, to where I had this guy who who falls asleep at work and he wakes up, and everybody's coming after him and they're using staple guns instead of gun uh, instead of regular guns mm -hmm. and. You know, uh, people are throwing like you know uh, envelope openers and stuff. So it, it was a lot of fun to shoot. And uh, um, the first film festival I entered was the All American Film Festival in Durham, um, that was run by a guy named Todd Tinkham, and it won Best Comedy Short. So my first film festival, I get an award, and so I was right. like, wow. Was it like a drug at that point? Oh, yeah, it was a drug. <laughs> and then uh, you know, I think after that, I, I didn't. I uh, hit a little bit of a slump, and I realized, well, you're not always gonna win an award, so right. you need to get over that. You need to, it needs to be more about just, you wanna make these films because, you know, it's your passion, and you, you know, like I made a film right after that that didn't do so well, um, and there was a film festival in D.C. that their film festival entry process, they had all these normal people who would rate your film on certain things, right. and they said really horrible things about the film at that time. And I was like so down, I was like, maybe I shouldn't make films anymore. <laughs> but then, you know, I got out of that, you know what? I think because with that film, I was trying to make something different than what I am. You know how some people like, they want to be flexible and right. they're like, I want to show that I'm, you know, I can do all these different types mm -hmm. of films. And I'm like, you know what? I know the type of films that I want to make. And uh, it was right after that that I made, a, uh, well actually, a Todd Tinkham, who was over the All-American Film Festival, I got to know him through that. Helped him out on his film, Southland of the Heart, which actually he ended up casting me in a part in. Um, and uh, so when I wanted to make my first film with actually a crew of people instead of it just being me doing everything, right. I got him to be the DP, um, and he got his friend Ken Peterson to also like be a co-DP on some scenes, which to me is like, this guy worked on Miami Vice, action scenes in Miami Vice, and he's working on my, my silly little film that involves people's heads exploding. Uh, so that was the first film that I had my first real experience with having a crew of people, and uh, it, it you know, I learned a lot from that because I, I'd, I'd never had that happen before. And but I think with each film, I've tried to be a little bit more professional in the things I do and the people I work with, um, so that I can make the best uh, movie possible. I had my Jaws moment because I, I saw it in a uh, film festival in DC called Spooky Movie, 
Um, and there was a group of women behind me, and they're like, man, that makes me never want to go into a public bathroom again. I was like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> got my Jaws moment. I'm making people scared of bathrooms. That's cool. Level seven completed. <laughs> yes. <laughs>